Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be exploring how the hedonic imperative makes free will impossible. Okay, um, before we do that, you know, I just want to review the basic um, purpose of this show. It's the, the idea is that we've, we've had this illusion of free will for centuries, millennia, and the hope is that by overcoming it, by transcending it, we can create a better world, a world that's more understanding. Um, because what happens is when we believe we have a free will, then when other people do things that are wrong, we'll blame them and, uh, and consider that they deserve to be punished. And when we do things wrong, we'll, cons you know, we'll feel guilty and we'll feel the pain of guilt. And um, naturally, understanding that we don't have a free will isn't license for us to just do whatever we want because ultimately we're not responsible for what we do. Um, you know, because you know, we, we, we need to, to kind of like, kind of hold ourselves ac accountable in a certain way, but you know, if we, if we do it from a causal will rather than a free will perspective, it would be a, a kinder world. Um, okay, if, these shows are going to be online, so if you don't catch, if, if you'd like to see them again, just go to causalconsciousness.com. Okay, and, uh, and again, before I get into the basic theme of today's show, I just want to review what we generally mean when we say that uh, we have a free will, what the illusion of free will is. Basically, when people say that they have a free will, it's, they mean that they can choose whatever they want, that nothing is compelling their choice, that their choice is completely up to them. And, for example, in the area of, of morality that's where it's you know extremely important that means like if something if somebody does something right for example then they deserve the credit you know um, that they, it was it was them that did it and you know it's completely their doing and they deserve credit and this is kind of interesting because like in in theology um, at least in judeo-christian and I think probably Islamic theology we tend to have the idea that when we do things right, we actually should feel grateful that, um, that it's actually God that, that deserves the credit, and which is a right interpretation, you know, from the theological perspective. But, um, you know, and when we do wrong, it's, it's, um, it would be our fault, whatever. But uh, so I, that's the idea. The idea, the idea is that, um, f that the term free will means that, that in moral decisions, when we do something right or wrong, it's completely up to us. And, and the problem is that, like, with a moral decision, if we, if, let's say, if, if we ourselves do something wrong, then um, if we don't recognize that we were completely compelled to do it, that it really wasn't our decision, we're going to punish ourselves. You know, um, we're going to say to ourselves, well, I deserve to feel pain. And so naturally, a lot of the show is about um, kind of like, transcending the illusion of free will so we are more understanding towards ourselves and others. So, um, so a proper understanding of reality will lead to a kinder world. Um, and naturally, um, the reality is, you know, that um, or all of our choices are causal. We don't have a free will, we have a causal will. Okay, and you know, what causes our decisions, our, our actions, our moral actions are can generally be described as the past. What's happened in the past causes what happens in the present, and what happens in the present causes what happens in, in the future. This is it's the basic principle of causality, cause and effect, which governs the entire universe, and so naturally it must govern our human will. So, so these are the terms. These, these are like this is what the debate has been about. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, this issue has been debated since the time of the Greeks. And in all that time, there's never been any convincing evidence that we have a free will. You know, some people claim that, um, that well, of course we have a free will. Uh, we experience ourselves as having a free will. But, you know, the reality is that, no, we don't really experience having a free will. We experience having a will. You know, that we don't experience having a, a will that's free f of the past, that's free of how we were raised, what we learned, what we didn't learn, our genetic makeup, our personality, our unconscious. You know, these, these factors that, that come together to actually decide for us what we do. 
All right, so and one of these, one of these factors is um, what I've coined the hedonic imperative. Um, actually, this is, um, it's, um, it's really like a pleasure principle. It's like Freud's pleasure principle, like, like a basic um, principle in science, in biology, in um, psychology, that we as human beings are hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Okay, that's what we do, you know, <laughs> through every moment of our lives. We, when we make a decision, it's based on the prediction that that decision is going to result in the greatest pleasure to us, either immediately or in the future, or is going to minimize, you know, any kind of pain we might feel. And so, so the idea is that we're completely programmed in this way. That's, you know, for example, if we were a computer, that would be the, the software. That would be how we would program. We have to, you know, the computer has to do what its program tells it to do. It, it doesn't have a choice. And it's the same with us. We are programmed. We have no choice but to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Okay, so naturally, what happens if, if, we're, if, if, every, if every decision that we make is based on this hedonic imperative, this, this hardwired compulsion and programming to do and think and feel what we predict is going to result in the greatest pleasure or the least pain, then how could that decision be free? You know, how could that decision be up to us? That's the key. You know, it's really, um, you know, for example, if, if a computer is, let's say a robot is, is programmed to make, let's say, a left turn every time it comes to a, a wall or some kind of obstacle, then you certainly wouldn't, you know, say that that robot had a free will. You know, it's doing what it's programmed to do. You know, it can't do otherwise. It can't, you know, it has to do what it's programmed. Again, we, we human beings are programmed biologically, genetically, to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Now, all right, some people might raise the objection, well, you know, there are times when we could do what's most pleasant or what's pleasant, but we, we actually choose to do what's, um, what, what's going to create more pain. And, and that's true. It's true, but that's really that, um, well, no, it's true in a sense, but what happens in those, sen in those cases, for example, we have a conscience. Okay, we have a conscience that, um, that needs to do what we consider right. So, like, let's say um, this, you know, I'm taping this show while the Libyan um, revolution is taking place. Okay, and there are many Libyan citizens. They're going out into the streets, risking their lives, getting killed um, for the greater good to, to establish democracy in Libya. Okay, so what happens is like the pain that they would feel by not fighting for, um, by not risking their lives for this democracy, for, you know, the freedom of self-determination, you know, freedom from, from Gaddafi as, as a dictator, a very cruel dictator, the pain they would feel by not doing um, something about that would um, would be um, more apparently than the pain of, of 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 getting you know shot by a bullet or or or, or even uh, losing their life. You know that's what our conscience is about. Um, there are other examples of this. Sometimes, like as parents, we will sacrifice. We will um, we will just work very hard, you know, like especially like um, mothers with infants, you know, they're, um, the, the, the infant has to be constantly attended to. They can't, you know, their conscious, conscience won't allow them to just simply do what they want and seek their own pleasure because, um, well, because of love for their, their child. So, so um, basically they will choose to, to um, to undergo the pain of, of being very attentive to the child, of, of just like sacrificing their own pleasure for the health and benefit of the child. But again, that's, that's really, um, it's a satisfaction of, 
of their of the demand of their conscience because uh, we're going to go into this in more detail but the hedonic imperative isn't the only program the only hardwired reason why free will is impossible uh, we also have a moral imperative in other words like and it's it's related to the to the hedonic um, in, uh, imperative in the sense that like we're hardwired to always do what we consider to be right and um, again the first thing that might come up when you consider that well is some people know that they're doing something wrong and they do it anyhow but when you really think about it you know in their mind at the time that they do that they're justifying it in that way like for example let's say um, an employee steals from a company you know part of them says well I know I'm doing something wrong but another part says well this company has been stealing from you know the employees and been doing a lot of wrong things so you know there's always a justification right or wrong um, okay so again like there are many there are many ways of understanding why free will is impossible why we simply just don't have free wills but uh, like for example simple cause and effect you know causality like like the fact that we have an unconscious you know that's always at work and always like you know always taking part in in our decisions and that's something I you know I'm gonna do shows about you know to just describe this in great in great detail but there have been experiments where for example uh, subjects have been primed you know um, primed meaning have been led through a certain exercise to um, to think in a certain way and then they make a decision and then they're asked why they make the decision and they give an answer but that answer has no relation to the priming in other words they they're they're just guessing the why they did it and they're they're guessing wrongly it's really you know they're it's um, they're on um, they're not conscious of of how the priming that was done by the experimenters actually led to what um, you know their behavior so so again there there are various different ways to understand why free will is impossible but but when you consider you can leave leave all all those other um, factors aside just the the um, the idea that there is hedonic this hedonic imperative um, completely um, describes the you know the reason why free will is impossible again let me let me review if we um, if we're programmed to always seek pleasure and always seek goodness I mean we can bring that into it also um, we have to do that we have no choice you know if you know if we're given a uh, choice between two foods an apple and um, a pizza okay um, for example let's say I was given that choice um, I've, I've become a vegan you know I, I, I can't conscience the way we treat farm animals I can't countenance it it's it's just cruel it's inhumane so so my conscience is leading me to to not eat um, animal products you know dairy products meat whatever so like so naturally if, if I'm given that choice I'm not gonna I like you know I would prefer part of me would prefer a pizza because it might taste better than the apple or you know for whatever reason but but my conscience you know I, I I have more pleasure in satisfying my conscience than in satisfying my taste my taste for foods 